Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. I'm your host, Caleb Schweiss. I am Joe. And today, guys, we are going to be bringing you the aptly named post-Shadowbringers content review. Um, kind post, of annoying. Post-Shadowbringers quests, I think. Yeah. Post-Shadowbringers scenario, main scenario quests. Yeah, that's a mouthful whatever the official title is will be the official title of this episode yeah it's kind of annoying because they had some really cool ones early on like the dragon song wars and the legend reborn legend reborn stuff like that where it's like oh this is a good name and they could have come up with a name but they didn't it's just, <laughs> they post- just they got lazy right right here this far in they're yeah. like oh ah, we don't have a name for any of these quests yeah so that's what we're here for. Uh, we just finished it last night. It took, as usual, a lot longer than we thought it would. <laughs> um, and you look at the wiki and you see three quests. You think, oh, you know, maybe an hour and a half. No. <laughs> four? Yeah, four hours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was three. I think it was three. Um, for just the cutscenes. Like, if we didn't stop and take a break, it would have been three. Yeah. And, you know, before anyone gets uppity <laughs> about the... <laughs> about the uh, complaint of the length of the cutscenes. We were talking last night. Um, somebody had mentioned, well, it is a Final Fantasy. Or no, Joe said he was looking on forums, and there was one other guy who was like, God, isn't this, is this like way too long for anybody else, or what? Am I crazy here? <laughs> and somebody's like, well, it is a Final Fantasy. But uh, Final Fantasy X... Final Fantasy X has almost exactly 10 hours of cutscenes. You can go find them on YouTube in like a playlist and, and see that. Um, Final Fantasy X, however, is a 30 to 40 hour game. Yeah. Uh, and so let's say the cutscene ratio for Final Fantasy X being, I guess, uh, for every, you know, three hours of gameplay, you get one hour of cutscenes for Final Fantasy X, which is a lot for most it's games. Kind of a that's lot of a lot. Yeah. And Final Fantasy X does have an exceptional amount of cutscenes. I want to say 12 has a, f- a few less. I want to say it's like eight hours. I used to know the hours off the top of my head, but I don't anymore. Um, we just looked at Endwalker <laughs> last night. Uh, a part one and a two. Uh, all the cutscenes put together were almost exactly 20 hours. Yeah. And looking at the amount of dungeons and trials there are, it seems like there's roughly like five dungeons in the main scenario quest, which is most of the gameplay for Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, and those are maybe an hour each. Yeah. So uh, 20 hours of cutscenes for five hours of gameplay in Final Fantasy XIV and Walker. <laughs> For those who maybe have been like rolling their eyes at us complaining about the cutscenes, I just want you to think about that. I just want you to think about the amount of not gameplay that is. And let's say, let's let's give it the benefit of the doubt. There's probably other little fetch quests involved. I'm giving it, here's the thing though, like the dungeons are always the longest thing. Yeah. So maybe it's 10 hours of gameplay. Maybe. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a two to one ratio of cutscenes being the two and the one being the gameplay. Yeah, and it's only getting progressively worse in that respect. I think the story is getting progressively better every time. And, you know, there's some stuff I'm remembering about, like the uh, um, Heaven's Word that was pretty sweet. Like when we got into the dragon section of this area, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Heaven's Word was awesome. Like maybe Heaven's Word is better than what I remember. But it to me, it seems like the story is getting... It's getting better, but it's also getting way, way longer. So It's getting more bloated. Yeah. <laughs> so we brought the receipts this time. We have the times. <laughs> it's a lot. Okay, so yeah, it's a Final Fantasy game, but this is the most cutscene Final Fantasy game of the Final Fantasy games, which are infamously cutscene heavy. So just saying. Well, how many there. dungeons do we do for this? Do you happen to know that? Um, I think it was like four or five. It was four or five. Okay, four or five. And we have spent the last month. I've been playing about an hour a, a night. Yeah. I On average. I bet we probably put about 35 hours. With five hours of actual gameplay. Yeah, so that's crazy. And we're, <laughs> and like, we're not even, you know, back in the day, this is something you also brought up the other day. It's like, man, don't you miss those like fetch quest quests? <laughs> and I kind of, because it, now it's just a... Hey, let's go talk 
Hey, how about we talk back at my place? <laughs> hey, let's go talk over here. You're like, God, can I just go, like, collect honeypots in the wild or <laughs> something, like, please? Let me kill five ladybugs and come <laughs> yeah. back to you. I'll kill 500. <laughs> I'll kill them all. Just something to do in between. Here's the thing. I listen. I, I, you know what? I've been, like, I've been hearing the criticisms or whatever from, like, the three people who give a shit. Yeah. And, um... Including Krenital, who's in the chat. Hi, Krenital. Yeah, welcome. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to re-listen to our reviews of every Final Fantasy XIV expansion, just the story section of it. Can't remember my ranking to save my life, by the way. Um, so that'll be interesting at the end of this. But um, the uh, I, I re-listened to all the story overviews and like our initial thoughts. Um, and I gathered, it was like, we're pretty into it with Realm Reborn, but even more into it with the stuff after Realm Reborn. So, like the patch content between Realm Reborn and uh, and Heaven's Word, yeah. And then we were pretty into it with Heaven's. Like we were into it up until like I think in Stormblood is where we had our first complaint of like. <laughs> yeah. You know, we made some joke about it being long-winded or something like, oh, it's 14, so, that you know, it's long-winded. But also in Stormblood, we had said, I think, that we were happy with the fact that we didn't have the stupid little fetch quests in between. Yeah. Uh, I've come here to say I was wrong. The game has just gotten longer and longer cutscenes and less and less gameplay as it's gone along, with which... If you can remember all these fucking characters, if you can remember every single event that happened in the last 20 days of (laughs) cutscenes playing Final Fantasy XIV, you might be involved in it. But I mean, that could only be possible if, like, one, you had some crazy memory, which my memory is pretty good, but not that good when it comes to this game for some reason because of these, like you know, a couple year breaks in between or whatever. And I get back into it. There's a brand new story. And like, they have like a thousand characters whose faces I recognize occasionally a name I recognize, but not with the face. Yeah. (laughs) And yeah, I actually like this time around about halfway through this patch content, I started like, okay, every time I hit a guy that I don't know, I'm going to look him up. And so I started doing that and I'm like kind of a little bit more familiar with 14. I wanted to be that way, not for this content, but for Ed Walker. Yeah, the end of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, to just kind of be there and have my hands, you know, sink them in a little bit further into the story so that hopefully I can enjoy the story a little bit more in Ed Walker because all I'm going to get is cutscenes. But yeah, I know we've complained about this before on non 14 episodes. We definitely completed about it on the Shadowbringers review, so maybe don't want to hammer it away, but I'm telling you, this game sometimes is really great, but you do have to slog through so much to get to those places, and it is starting to really irk me. It's really starting to bother me. Yeah. Like, so much so that I'm like, ugh, like, I'm dreading playing a video game. Like, I have to, like, when I turn on the PS5, I'm like, okay, here's an hour and a half of cutscenes. I don't, and, you know, I just feel time clicking by, and I (laughs) see the wrinkles showing up on my face. And I'm like, what the, what am I doing? What am I doing with myself? All you get for it is a couple (laughs) head nods, you know? You get some head nods, and oh my god, it's like, it's not just like that there's a quest and it's all cutscenes. If it was, if it just like kept going with the cutscene and like made it short, but no, it'll do like one cutscene. Yeah, what you were saying earlier. Let's talk about this more over at my place, and then I have to teleport to the next area, click on the same guy in the new spot, get another cutscene. Yeah, that maybe like maybe a little short one, maybe even longer. And then sometimes it's like, oh, we're not done yet. We must go to the library and do some research where Alphanod is, and it's like. Okay, let's go meet Alpha out at the fucking library and just like yeah. tsh, I'll teleport to the library and then get another cutscene. It's like nothing God. sounds nothing yeah. sounds more appealing than that on a Sunday afternoon. <laughs> let's go to the library and research. <laughs> like, didn't you guys just used to do this shit in the background? Like, oh, why you got to make me part of it all now? Fucking God, I, I'm hands off. Like, okay, I've, I've already complained about the writing, like line by line type writing, not not necessarily overarching, large overarching yeah, yeah. story. But there's also like the scenes, sometimes the scenes in between the good scenes, 
which maybe you like if you're playing this thing maybe you only listen to the good scenes maybe you sk- like i have considered skipping cutscenes where there's no voice acting just That's, to get like get to the point i think you could probably do that <laughs> Except that there's actually information in those cutscenes. I was thinking that, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to pay attention to these. Like, I'm going to try to pay attention more. Like, I'm trying not to shut off my brain while I'm watching these cutscenes. And, like, yeah. then they're they're giving, like, really important information away. And I'm like, shit, I do have to watch these fucking things, don't I? So, all right. That's my review of Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, once again. Post, post uh, Shadow or post Stormblood. Um, yeah, uh, so <laughs> it's true, it's all true, it's all true, but the gameplay's great, it's really, it's still a fun game, you know, and Areas I, these are cool, it's, yeah. it's fun to play multiplayer. I mean, here's the ridiculousness of this multiplayer, massive multiplayer online RPG. Yeah, man, we're gonna get, we're gonna play some 14, okay, Krenital or or Dr. Roxo, whoever's helping us with the quest, all right, man. I'll meet you there at seven o'clock. Let's play one dungeon. Okay, I got six hours of cutscenes. See you later. Yeah. That's that's the gameplay. You play for a second and then have to do a ridiculous amount of cutscenes uh to get to the next thing where you can play with other people. Yeah. Admittedly, we part part of it is our own fault, I guess, for not unlocking more content. But most of the content that we're unlocking is kind of older stuff anyway, right? Yeah. Like I, I'm sure there are, there are things in this area of the game that we haven't done that we need to unlock and do. Yeah, we that, still haven't unlocked everything in Heaven's Word. We've unlocked yeah. everything. I believe we've done everything in A Realm Reborn. Um, when we were on our list, maybe some of the raids we didn't, but at least the dungeons and the trials. Yeah, and then we like Heaven's Word. We have like a list of things to get through in Heaven's Word, and we definitely should. Um, yeah, then I don't know. I don't, the review is going to take twice as long if we do that, by the way, <laughs> cause then we'll be playing. Well, I, uh, we will probably have more fun, uh, <laughs> but then we'll be playing the game for twice as long. Cause it'd be like, okay, an hour of dungeon, hour of cutscene, hour of dungeon, hour of cutscene. Yeah. Maybe we could split it up that way. <laughs> I think the days that we meet up for story dungeons, we should have like two or three other things ready to go. So that we can knock those out. And so yeah, that's like, not a bad idea. All right, guys, meet up at this time. We're going to play for like three hours. It might be less miserable as a multiplayer experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, they should call it a massively single player. Massively single player. Online role-playing game. It's, it's like, um, it's kind of like Bloodborne. You just bring people in for some of the fights every once in a while, but otherwise it's a single player experience. Yeah. it is. Yeah, it is. It's kind of, it's just like those from software games. Yeah, there you go. So and like it's really like really annoying, really difficult. But that's just the cutscene part. Then you get to the gameplay; it's actually pretty smooth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go ahead. All right. So the post Shadowbringers content takes place. You guessed it. After the Heavensward, Stormblood, and Shadowbringers expansions, but definitely before the Endwalker expansion. <laughs> So the expansions That's for the people in the future listening to this. Yes, yeah. Okay. The expansion's first update, patch five point one, was released October twenty ninth, twenty nineteen, and the final update took place on May twenty fifth, two thousand and twenty one. So, so this is the uh, the COVID patches. Yes. <laughs> um. So make sure to give them some extra cutscenes because they're bored. Yeah, exactly. They're they're just trapped in their homes. Um. So, story picks up right where we left off. Our characters' bodies are wasting away in the source, and our friends are desperately trying to return before they die. Yulemore's citizens decide to leave the socioeconomic level, the socioeconomic playing field, with China's <laughs> as their new mayor. So, the uh, extravagant Yulemore um, is no more. The Scions give the people on the first a bit of a history lesson about the original Warriors of Light, because if you remember correctly, the people on the first... So there's the first, which is like a weird alternate dimension thing that's also in the future. It's really fucking dumb, but that's basically what it is. Uh, So there, everything's light, right? Because if you remember the, the, the last expansion, the Shadowbringers... We were bringing the shadow to this land that had been overrun. It was kind of a cool yin and yang thing. Yeah, we actually like kind of called it earlier on in one of our early reviews. By the way, 
Yeah, because we were like, where's the Warriors of Darkness? Yeah, and then we became that. Yeah. <laughs> Square's listening. Exactly, yeah. They're just not listening to the part where we want this to be a game. They they want to make sure we suffer a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, by not by, by making us not play their game so much as read and watch <laughs> their game take take place before our eyes. Yeah, for that douchebag on that forum who said their Final Fantasy, you know, it's a dude, come on, it's a Final Fantasy game. It's like, fuck you, I played every Final Fantasy game. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. This yeah. is horrendous <laughs> yeah, it's a lot it's a lot a lot a lot so it's the this is it's the member berries final fantasy game i'm telling you now it's remembering itself because before it's like oh remember matoya and her cave with their brooms remember, remember sid remember sid remember this remember remember, remember memphilia remember magitech armor and now it's member shadow member uh shadow bringers member stormblood <laughs> member you're like yeah i remember i'm like fuck I barely remember. Remember now. when you played the game? Remember that? <laughs> uh, so anyway, anyway, um, so the Scions give them a history lesson about the original Warriors of Light, who they basically hated forever, um, and they're kind of saying, "Hey, look, they weren't bad guys. They were trying to actually save you. It's just it's fake news." Uh, and at the end of the story, Elidibus appears. Elidibus, uh, not a sexual act. I looked it up. Um, he appears using <laughs> Ardbert's corpse. And attempts to awaken the people to their echo that he then reveals as a fragment of their original selves' powers rather than a gift from Heidelin. So, like, the whole echo thing was supposed to be a gift from uh, one of the primals, right? Um, but in this world, since they're not really a real world, it's just, like, a fragment of their original selves in the actual world, I guess. I don't really like that in this. So, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but also not that sorry. Uh, so then we find out Elidibus's motives are revenge on Emmett Selk and La Habrea being killed. And then we find out that he originated the Warrior of Light legend. And he's using the faith of the people who he's trying to like, who were at this history lesson and shit like that. He's trying to use their faith to increase his power because he's kind of like a, it's like a weird primal thing going on with these people. Um, he then attacks Graha um, and Lug. So Graha is the crystal exarch. Um, and he acquires a means of summoning, and he is basically waiting at the Crystal Tower for the showdown. I was kind of surprised that Elidibus died so fast in this thing. I was like, oh, I thought he was going to be like the end. Yeah, it was just kind of the first half of the patches. Yeah, so his story. And then we got our then we got our uh, Dan <laughs> Fan Daniel Fan Daniel yeah. Fan Faniel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, Elidibus takes the form of the first warrior of light, but he's eventually defeated by Graha and the party, and we seal him in the tower. So Graha fully crystallizes and uses his memories to power up the orocytes that our party is using to return to their bodies. So we're allowed to travel back and forth because we're special, yeah. but all of our buddies um, are basically just laying comatose back at home. Um, Watched over by the Lalafell queen. Yeah. Whatever the hell her name is. Uh, the one who died and then came back to life. I don't think it's the her that's watching them, though. I think it's like uh, Creel and... Uh, yeah, Creel. Creelay. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, I just think I just got two Lollafells mixed up. I'm yeah. sorry, that was do they all Do they all look the same? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Messed Maybe. up. We'll find out. Krenital will... Uh, Write me an angry letter later. Yeah. It's probably not all right Lollafells look the same. Uh, so then El Hus goes to the Crystal Tower to wake up Graha, and upon infusing him with the memories and soul of his future self, not sure how we did that, but we did, um, he then joins the Scion. So Graha was the Crystal Exarch, but like it's a weird alternate universe alternate dimension in the future kind of a thing so we then took because of the because of like the power he gave us and his blood and shit that we used to then pull ourselves back to our home somehow he like uploaded his fucking memories so then this kid has all of the memories of the time that he would have spent in the crystal tower forever but he didn't because he's not in that world. I, it's soup. It's dumb. But he knows everything. He knows everything now, and he's now part of the uh, the Scion. So now we have two Scions who know everything. We have him, 
and we have uh, Alpha Nod. So we have two know-it-alls. But one actually knows it all. And the other one's just Alpha Nod. Um, so uh, that happened. And he's part of the team. So uh, one other joke I had in here is like, I can imagine you stole a waking up and being like, what is all this? Why am I covered in stickiness? <laughs> like, just sleeping, you stole a, you know. It's my, it's my rape joke for the episode. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, really, though, uh, you stole a... I don't know, man. I don't know if they're going to make her any hotter in the next expansion. Because really, I think Final Fantasy fourteen has just been an ever-increasing in hotness you stole a... Maybe that's just in your head. Maybe. Maybe you're just getting more and more attracted to the bunny. Well, she's more of a cat. Oh, yeah, cat. Kitty cat. Yeah. She's got ears, you know. Yeah, you know. She's like an ant. She likes like, to a, be, like a mammal. She likes to be scratched behind those ears. Yeah. And see, that's weird because I don't, you know. That's the you difference. don't have ears, yeah. Yeah, I don't have ears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but really, though, the I'm kind of surprised that everybody kind of woke up and they're just good to go. You'd think they'd have, like, joint stiffness and, like, major <laughs> muscle atrophy. Yeah, no one's, like, like vomiting. Like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They just kind of got up and walked. I'm like, man, you'd be weak as fuck. You guys have been in there for I'm two spr- years. Yeah, and- you know, anything to elongate the telling of this convoluted story, they should have given us at least two hours of cutscenes about, like, motion sickness. And then, yeah, let's go. Yeah, could you go do some research at the library about how to get rid of the motion sickness? <laughs> Yeah, like seriously. And then once you get to the library, they're like, well, there was a book, but the book was missing. And we should ask blah, blah, blah. We should ask Sid about where this book might possibly be. I heard once upon a time he he dealt with motion sickness as a as a guy. And then you teleport to go find Sid. You can't find Sid anywhere. And then you have to do a little fetch quest in order to like open up a thing in order to find Sid in some cave somewhere. That's how this game would shake out whatever that story is. Then yeah, you yeah. finally get, you know, Sid and he's like, Oh, it's this ingredient. You gotta gather these ingredients. You gather those ingredients. You go back to Sid, there's a big cutscene where Sid makes the potion and he says everything's all right. And then you take it and then you go and then you give them all the potion to, to deal with the motion sickness. That would be you know, one way to, to do it. Come on, Final Fantasy fourteen staff. You could have you could have made it longer. Yeah, man. There could have been a whole patch dedicated yeah. to us rehabilitating our team. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, because for us, it was like two years. I mean, because it's been a while since we came <laughs> back to this game. They've been sitting I've been there stuck waiting. in the alternate dimension for so long. Yeah. Who knows what's really, truly real? Yeah. Um, so meanwhile, in Garlemald, uh, meanwhile... <laughs> The uh, Xenos has shown usurping the throne and plans a reunion with the Warrior of Light. He just has to find the dumbest weapon in his arsenal before he can do it. <laughs> so uh, the party then learns that the Eorzean Alliance <laughs> has been taking full advantage. We'll come back to that, by the way, uh, over Garlemald's infighting as they are opening peace talks with the Beast Tribes. So it's kind of a cool little... Uh, thing they had going on they're finally ready to yeah you're getting back into the world that we're more used to i guess <laughs> you're getting back into the the regular old world and it's basically almost like a refresher it's what i realized like the last patch was kind of like remember the beastmen remember the sylphs <laughs> remember all these people that you hadn't seen in forever yeah and you're kind of like doing a little bit of a world tour as you're setting up n walker yeah um, so Alice tests her new phlebotomy techniques as a cure for primal tempering, um, which is based, of course, upon her experience with the people that were infected by the Sin Eaters in the first. Uh, this is when we cure good old Gaboo, favorite character, uh, pet name for my child occasionally, um, and tiny little Twitch monster in this, uh, in this world. Uh, I think, I think it was... Redrick, who was watching me play this game, and he's like, someone get that man a... a oh, what, what is I it? I remember it's a, it. It's a medication for fucking... Someone get that man a Xanax. A Xanax, yeah, because he's just like twitching and like <laughs> fucking mad. Just like, anybody got any coffee? Oh my god, dude. Gaboo was one where I had to look him up. Because <laughs> I was like... I honestly... I, wa- I was watching the cutscene with this fucking annoying thing, and I was like... Everybody's talking like we know who this guy is. I can't remember who this is for the life of me. (laughs) I was like searching my brain. I was like really, really trying to like 
oh, where have I seen this guy? Like just nothing, just like nothing came up in my brain. And then, uh, and I had to Google him and apparently he was a big deal in Stormblood. And <laughs> Yeah. It's like, I don't remember him at all. This guy, I have no memory of this guy. We should remake all of the 14 <laughs> content and just like insert you in the game. And you're just like, hey, who the fuck, who's that? <laughs> who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> I haven't seen him for four years, real years in my life. Yeah, you just like whisper over to like one character is your go-to. It's like the... <laughs> The really annoying guy, Orion J. You're like, hey, Orion J. Who, who the hell's that? What are we talking about? Just some kid. It is thine friend, the midget beastman <laughs> from from yours, days of yore. I'm like, oh, thanks. He like doesn't help at all. <laughs> he just kind of lean over. Like, who I'm surprised I didn't get one of those like funny 14 flashbacks they've started doing. Like, I don't think this is something they've been doing the whole time. It's just like when they've talked about a character. And then they have like the still frame flashback of just like that character's face. <laughs> yeah. And that is nice because it's like telling the player who maybe remembered, like, remember that guy's face? That's who we're talking about right now. Like, I could use more of that, actually. I could really. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we've, we've had now here about 150 hours of story content in 14 spread over 10 years or some shit. So yeah, it is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's cured. Uh, we helped unite some, uh, pirates, um, in Limsa Lamenta. <laughs> I hated the pirate section so <laughs> yeah. much. So, this is part of that world tour you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, this is part of the world tour I was talking about, but the pirate section is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in a video game ever. It's just like the stupidest, like pirate code bullshit thing, like pirates of the Caribbean, but with like really lame pirates. Who are like we're not gonna we're not gonna count out or whatever government bullshit. They're all just like out on their ship. They're about to like cause a scene, and then you got the uh, whatever her name is. She goes out. She's she's gonna fight a duel with these people, and um, yeah. And then they have the big head honcho pirates like stop. You know he's like twelve feet tall or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like oh oh the captain said no. I guess we're not gonna you know revolt. Like pirates actually probably would in this situation and say fuck you to the old captain and you know what a uh, mutiny mutiny is a <laughs> yeah <laughs> mutiny the uh I guess he was uh, he was tempered so they they cured him of that mm. but not that that really matters because you're right they're just acting like normal pirates but they're not acting like normal pirates well they're they're, they're acting they like were. very Disney not even Disney <laughs> pirates <laughs> yeah I mean those movies are actually pretty. <laughs> violent sometimes. I'm like, damn. <laughs> They're acting ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Go ahead. sorry. Uh, we unite those guys with Limbs of Limensa again. Uh, that was kind of a big waste. And then we start hearing rumblings of mysterious towers appearing across the land. And our new antagonist, Dan Fanielson, reveals that he is part of the Telefor Illuminati cult. <laughs> and. <laughs> His objective is to burn everything down to the ground. Yeah, yeah. Just like every bad guy. Yeah. But he also wants to rival the FF11 dancing troop leader in flamboyancy. <laughs> Unlike some bad guys in this game, <laughs> it's about 50 50 now. We're at half, half dancing troop guys, half, you know, Dark Lord. It is 50 50. Yeah. Um,. The highly offensive gay character in Final Fantasy XI is guy. He's got some competition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I think they blew their load with him at Selk being like like Arden and fifteen being kind of like quirky but like really evil. Yeah, and now they're just like, well, let's just make him quirky instead. <laughs> like we used up the really good one. Now shit, I guess we're gonna have to make this guy just. He yeah, literally he has scenes with Zenus and he does dance moves while he's <laughs> yeah. talking yeah and wow i mean Zenos, and not to mention his name being hilarious yeah <laughs> uh Dan, what is it fan daniel fan daniel that's right yeah i forget his real name because i've made fun of it so much now it's like <laughs> dan it's, daniel <laughs> yeah we were talking about it last night and you're like wait a minute so fanny danny is fan daniel <laughs> is he like 
your biggest fan whose name is Daniel, or is he a fan of Daniels? I think your name for fan of Daniels is like Daniel Fanson or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) Fancy Dan Fanny Faniel Danielson. Yeah. The fuck? (laughs) What kind of name is this? Dan Fanielson just makes me want to like play Phasmophobia. Dan Fanielson. This is one of those situations where we're going to make fun of a name and they'll be like, well, it's an old German name. Yeah. (laughs) That that means, you know, world killer or some shit. It's like, okay, sorry. Yeah. Oops. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds dorky. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, we got a new bad guy. Um... He uses like a primal-ish kind of creature, I'm not really sure, uh, named Lunar Bahamut to attack the party, and then basically threatens to burn the cities of the world to the ground with this beast if our hero, El Husk, or no, Sir Husk, that's his ancestor, uh, doesn't rematch Xenos. Um, the investigation of the towers begins. We travel to Alamigo to learn that Lise was attacked by a scout who became tempered while investigating the towers. It kind of reminds me of like... I don't know, just any, like, thrall kind of system where they just get mind-controlled. That's pretty much what's happening to them. Uh, so Rob On sends uh, the Megapus-faced Fordola and Jesus Arnivald, Christ. a friend of Alphanods, to investigate the tower. The face is a, uh, look at the Parasite episode of Nude Clan <laughs> yeah. in order to understand that reference. But go ahead. Yeah. You always bring it up on here, and I'm like, it just sounds horrible and offensive and disgusting, <laughs> yeah. and no one knows what you're talking about. I think it's actually the Mortal Kombat episode where I I got called out on oh, it. Oh, was it Mortal Kombat? Yeah, you just, it, in uh, on the Parasite Eve, like, logo you made on my computer, it was sitting when I got home. That was after that oh, episode, so you could just put it on so there. So one of the Mortal Kombat episodes. I think it's the first Mortal, one. The movies. It's pretty funny moment. Uh, but yeah, it's not what you think it is. It's not what I thought it was either. Uh, so <laughs> she's really grumpy. That's basically what it is. Uh, and they investigate the tower. Um, they have the echo, so they're immune to being tempered. Um, so they're good candidates. Arnivald gets attacked or, uh, Fordola gets attacked and he like jumps in front of it and then is crippled afterwards, but whatever. Uh, the party then visits Tiamat for information on Lunar Bahamut and eventually we free Tiamat. Um, I thought this was a cool sp- Cool scene. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. Anytime the dragons are talking, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I bet you it's like just reverse English or Japanese or something. They just like play the track in reverse. There's something they do with it. Or yeah. they just make gibberish. I don't know. Similar to the voice effect they do in Leviathan 15. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so she eventually pledges to assist the Alliance um, with the assault led by Lunar Bahamut. Um, and eventually... Yeah. We take out Lunar Bahamut with an epic uh, sitar slash guitar battle uh, where the mix is clearly too quiet for the sitar, in my opinion. <laughs> um, that was an awesome dungeon, by the way. That was sweet. Yep. Especially, like, the final bit, right, where we're going to the final fight. You got the music just raging in the background. A great sun sunrise thing going on on the horizon. Dragons, shit flying around. It's like, nice. Yep. Epic sitar going on. <laughs> the sitar solo in the heavy metal song, really. Yeah, it's sweet. It really man. makes it stand out. It really does, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, then we return to Call of the Banners. Uh, the Beast Tribes and the Alliance set aside their differences, and we do unite against the uh, Telefor Illuminati um, as the newly dubbed <laughs> Grand Company of Eorzea. What is it actually called? It's like Telefor... Telefori. Telefori? Yeah. yeah. Some mysterious group. Mm, yeah, behind the scenes. Yeah. That seems to be just Fan Daniel's thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Fan, he's not just fan of Daniel. He's fan of under underground organizations mm. that pull the strings. Um, above ground. Probably on the moon, I'm guessing. Very above ground. Like... <laughs> Like thousands of miles above ground. Yeah. Flying with a dragon. Yeah. At least dancing. That kind of a thing. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Seems like he's put bringing a lot of you attention know, to it. It's probably an evil dance troupe. It's probably what it is. Oh, man. Maybe it is. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> That's going to make for some fun dungeons in this coming expansion. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for the fucking AOEs. The waltz. The yeah. waltz AOEs. Yeah. Slash, slash waltz. Hurry. Hurry. You got to put it on your hot bar. No, no, no. Mumbo. Mumbo. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't fucking know this shit, okay? I can't wait. I don't know if you've ever played like the the remake of Sid Meier's Pirates, the like 2003 one or whatever, the 3D one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's like a whole bunch of dancing in that thing. You go and you you get like married at different ports. You like, and you have to like dance with the. You have to do like old timey dances with the with the women, and it's like a button like arrow game. Button event. I've yeah. been thinking about that game a lot. I've brought it up like twelve times in the last. It's been a lot. Three yeah. months, like. I keep on thinking about that Sid Meier's Pirates and always thinking like, mm, I kind of miss it. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe that Sid Meier's Pirates. I th- it's on Steam, I'm pretty sure. So. Oh, shit. There we go. Yeah, I give something to do. Not that you don't already have enough to do. <laughs> um, So, uh, yes, they uh, get raked over the coals right after they're about ready to go out to battle by Fortunal, who disowns Alice and Alphanod both for taking after their dead grandpa, um, who is the old man, if you remember. In the cutscenes with the Bahamut. Yeah. At the beginning of the game. When they get nuked. Slash the end of the of the original 14, I think. Yeah. 1.0. I think he might be in the same cutscene. Yeah, it is. It's okay. With Bahamut destroying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, he gets wiped out. Um, so uh, Alpha Note and Alice's dad doesn't like that they're going this way. Um, he wants a Sherlion to remain neutral since they don't think the end of days is upon them. So it's kind of like a tea leaves reading where they're like, no, it's not time. So we're not going to engage. We're going to be neutral. They're basically Switzerland, it seems like, which kind of makes sense because their kids or well, one of their kids is just like a diplomat, more or less. The other one's just a hotter head version of the diplomat brother. Um, so the meeting's cut short with an announcement that the Telefor Illuminati are marching <laughs> on the Cartano Flats and the new Grand Company of Eorzea and the Scions. Oh, when they, oh you, you, you skipped the part where they have to name the Grand Company, the new Grand Company that they're creating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and it's just like, what do you think this Grand Company should be called? And it has a close-up on your character, and it gives you two options. It's like, name, the, name it, or you can't think of a name. So it's yeah. like, I guess it's Eorzean Grand Company. It's stupid. Yeah, I was like, for a second, I'm like, is it actually going to have us? Like, if we do this option, like, forever on with our characters thing, it'll be like that name? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> it's the Husk Company. Nope. It's a false choice. Yeah. The the best of choices. <laughs> yep. Um, so we win the fight, obviously, and the Scions head to Charlian to find out why the Forum, uh, which is the leaders of that area, is hiding information, and our hero, El Husk, gets... A glimpse of Lady Galadriel, who warns him <laughs> that the apocalypse is coming. <laughs> uh, then we get one more scene with Fan Danielson and Xenos, where Danielson is preparing to open the gates of the gods, whatever that means, and Xenos discarded his awesome katanas for a gunblade scythe thing. The weapon is chosen, and the final stage has been set. The yeah. fucking moon. It comes out of the clouds <laughs> like with a vengeance. It's like, holy shit, that's a moon. <laughs> you guys remember that moon? <laughs> Just like the clouds part. It's a bright, horrible looking moon comes yeah. out. Uh, oh, shit. I forgot about oh, the fucking fuck, moon. There's a moon there. Yeah, uh, that's no moon. Yeah, there's the, the part with Xenos and his stupid weapon. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a gun blade, it's a gun scythe. Hilarious. Yeah, you know, in case you're out there like hacking the <laughs> cutting down the wheat fields and you see a deer going by. You in could case just... the gun blade was already like the dumbest idea on the planet. Gun scythe. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, you want the barrel to be as far away from your line of sight as possible <laughs> yeah. on a weapon. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, what if you run into trouble when you're out in the field? I guess know? that's you if could... you really want to kill someone, because then you could, like, stab them in the chest or something with the scythe, and they're like, oh, and they're like, oh, well, they might survive, so I might as well pull the trigger now. And then just, like, <laughs> blast their back half of that, like, completely out of there. <laughs> yeah. That's the only way that that would be useful. Yeah, af- it's like a killing... It's like the killing blade, you know, you fight, you hack them down with the big one, and then you stab them with yeah. the tiny one. Or you could take the scythe that you could, like, put it into the ground, like, stand it up, and then it's, like, perfectly, and then, you know, it's got, like, you know, it's like a tripod where you have, like, the, 
make the, <laughs> the adjustments and you can get it with your line of sight perfectly and you can snipe people. Yeah, uh, I mean, that'd be good. A snipe scythe. Yeah, you got your it's long range, snipe. you got your short range. <laughs> You're good. Who's going to fuck with you? No one. Yeah, no one's the answer. <laughs> You're going to win. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Just, so yeah, it's it's fucking. So there's tripod. that that Zena says is like his monologue, and he's looking at the moon, and he's he's holding the moon in his head, and he's like crushing it with his fist. It's very dramatic. Yeah, the moon's extremely bright too. You got like shadow effects coming off his hand. I'm like, God, yeah, hard that's a, hard moonlight. It's a bright ass moon. Like it's you know like the light cinematography moonlight. Yeah, like, you know the light. The moon doesn't actually have a light source, right? Like it's just a <laughs> reflection of the sun. Like. <laughs> Just check in. Make sure you know that. Yeah, it's a very diffused light. But yeah. yeah. Uh, nobody needs to know that. I don't need people watching movies and looking for hard light, hard shadows, because they will find them. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where it ends. Um, that is where it ends. I already yeah. gave my biggest complaint about it. I'll, I guess I'll let you go. Uh, so I do think the story, like I said before, it is it is still good. I think the story overall is solid. Um, it's interesting, but it is very, it's bloated in its telling, but like the actual important stuff I think is pretty good. Yeah. But the it, highlights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the, the spark notes, it's yeah. like, this would take a couple hours to tell really amazingly. Um, and I don't know, maybe MMOs just aren't our thing. I don't know what it is like. Well, I don't know how other MMOs tell their story. I played like five seconds of World of Warcraft, and that's it. Yeah, and I mean, I also don't... We are playing it in a kind of a weird way. The only pushback to that I would give, for anyone who says that's why we don't like it, is, well, when the patches would come out, I bet every one of you guys just plowed through the patch. Yeah, just plowed through whatever. the patch, watched all those cutscenes. Yeah, you get a few months respite in between, you know, the patches. And that's all like gameplay time, and then yeah. then it's you know cutscene time. But it's not just the patches; it's like when there's a full expansion, then you're plowed through it just like we will be. Yeah, like I can't imagine you're just like oh, you know wait, wait till I get there. Yeah, it'll be a few months, guys. You know, you're not doing that. You're trying to get to the next dungeon. So yeah, you play the dungeon with your friends. Because by the time the new expansion comes out, you're probably content starved. You know, because yeah. it's only every couple of years that they come out with these things. And so when it does release, you plow it to get to all of the dungeons to yeah. then add those to your dailies that you do. So you have more variety to to go with to play. Um, yeah, I I yeah. I thought this one was patchy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the st- I actually liked when when fan when fan Daniel shows up. I thought it kind of picked up, and that was kind of nice getting the dragon and everything, being reminded. And part of it was me looking up shit on Wikipedia, but being reminded of you know the world that you were in before you went to the other world. Um, yeah. The name of which always escapes me, but you know the area with all the light and shit. Um, the first. The first. Yeah. When you go to the first, um it's yeah. It it when when Van Daniel, Dan Faniel, whatever his fucking name is, when he shows up, I thought it picked up. I thought the pirate part was really stupid. I thought that like patch five point two, where yes, literally they're talking about going and finding information and studying shit at the library, I thought was like atrociously boring. Uh, and you were going back and forth, like fucking just, just to go back and forth and like go from one cutscene to another cutscene to another cutscene. I thought that was kind of lame, but you know, every, every one of these patches outside of the pirate one <laughs> ends on a high note, I think with like a pretty cool, like, cutscene and i just wish the game was like i th- I just wish you just got rid of the other shit uh, or, or like made that like expository stuff much faster yeah and like who gives a fuck if like you only have you know three hours of cutscenes, <laughs> like yeah. if they're good but these aren't i mean yeah i don't think they're they're that good so I, i'm excited to see ann walker i'm gonna really try to pay attention really try to get into it um you know, I'll give it that. Shadowbringers, I remember with Shadowbringers, like, I was into it at the beginning, and I was into it at the end, and then the stuff in the middle was, like, really difficult for me to just, like, hang on to and pay attention to, and 
I'm hoping that's not the case with N Walker. We've only heard good things. So I'm excited to see that. Um, <clears throat> the stuff with the dragons was awesome. I thought at the end and all five of the dungeons were sweet. Um, there were no trials this time around. Were there? Mm. I don't remember one. I think we had one right after a dungeon. Oh, yeah, you're right. We had a trial that was like immediately after one of the dungeons. So it was one trial and like five dungeons. Um, or f- yeah, five dungeons because it was one per patch. And um, all those dungeons are fantastic. They're all beautiful. The music for Shadowbringers, the stuff in Shadowbringers is still really good. Uh, including the new light heavy metal sitar track, which I think the sitar is mixed a little high. It's a little loud in the mix, but uh, in a kind of way that made me giggle a little bit. But I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. Um, like the dragon dungeon was really cool. I do. Um, yeah, all that stuff. I don't know if you have thoughts on that. Those things. Uh, no, I, I thought they were really good. Um, I think the music is good. Um, I liked the. Obviously, the sitar metal was sweet as fuck. Um, and then, what about the mumble metal? The like final, like, man, 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 like thing at the end of the credits. It's um, like the, I think it's the song for. Um, it's for the actual like Walker, expansion. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. Soken's main theme for the expansion. Yeah. Um, I don't know the name of the song. Sorry, but yeah, it's what plays in the credits. I definitely like it more than the, I don't. Uh, I don't care for it, but well, I like it more than the weird like noise version of it that we got. I think the only. We were pretty into it when we first started the pad. We have played this expansion a lot. That that song plays all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't heard much. it's funny. I think we I only heard once. I think we only had to go through the area one time during this entire patch things with a yeah. yeah. I missed it. <laughs> Cuz like the it's a song that starts like it's really funny sounding right at the beginning and then it kind of gets it actually to a groove and it actually sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah, I like Sokin's work on this on this expansion as a whole. I'm, I'm excited to see what he does for the Endwalker areas. Yeah, he's kind of like 50/50 on the main themes though for me cuz I didn't like Stormblood's. Well, no, Nabuo made most of those no, main really? main the <sighs> song ones the song ones I don't like, like the, the, Storm the, the pox one. no yeah he did like the first two were really good and then the rest in my opinion as well were not as good yeah um this one i think is better than the stormblood one though i think I, at least it's like a rock song mm, okay yeah. give it that it's like <laughs> easy points for me <laughs> yeah. but uh overall i i agree the music is good i think the dungeon music does get a little bit repetitive oh um, well, yeah it's just we've we've done only Shadowbringers content constantly. Yeah. I feel like if we went back and did like Heaven's Word and Realm Reborn and heard that music in between, that would be one of those situations where it's like, yeah, we're playing the game wrong. Yeah. <laughs> because all the only dungeon music we're hearing is the sh- like the required Shadowbringers stuff right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's stuff we remember from when we played it two years ago. Yeah. So it's like, God, I've heard it's, this it's little... The most fresh. Little dee, doodle dee, I've heard it like so many times. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, oh man! And then the last dungeon when it's interrupting the like metal, I'm like, shut up, <laughs> just play your normal theme. What are you doing? Why are you bringing uh, yeah, this shit? That's in true. Here? Yeah, you when you're doing the like, you know, in the in the dungeons, you kind of clear normal uh, enemies, and then you have like little bosses in the dungeon. Um, and it w- yeah, it interrupted the really cool area music. For the regular Shadowbringers uh, enemy fight yeah. theme. Yeah, it was annoying. You're right. Um, I will tell you, man, these dungeons, before we upgraded our equipment, the first two dungeons that we did, we got our asses handed to us bad. Yeah. It, it had also been so long since we played last, which might have been a mistake, dude. There's a part of me that just kind of wants to keep the sub going and just like... Just let the show pay for the sub. <laughs> and just like every time there's a patch, actually hop in and do the patch content and do a little review on it. Like not worry about filling a whole hour. Just like do a review on each patch. And also so that I don't have to be in the situation where I haven't touched the game in two years. 
my hot bar has to be remade because I'm on a new fucking system or some shit. And I, I can't remember how to play the game. Dude, it was horrible. Like just restarting this stuff. Like I redid my hot bar and then we tried doing that first dungeon. I think how many times do we have to do the first dungeon? It was a few times. Yeah, it was a couple times. It's a long, and we timed out the first time, which is like yeah. an hour and a half or something. Yeah. That's a long time. To not get anything done. Yeah. And it was like, I had just set my hot, I reset up my hot bar. Um, Cause of course there was a new expansion and with the new expansion, they update the spells and stuff. So that the meta slightly changes. I'm playing white, white mage. I see all these new things and then I'm remembering, okay, what I remember is like having to constantly cast cure and then occasionally we get a proc for cure too. That's the only like part of my character's like abilities that I remembered. I also remembered, okay, there's certain types of abilities I use that then if I use enough of them and fill up this like rose thing, it gives me like a really strong attack. Um, those are the, that's like all the details that I remembered about my, <laughs> yeah. about my healers like meta. Which, by the way, like the the cure one and the cure two stuff, I I don't use it nearly as much as I used to. Like that only happens if like the battle's going kind of well and like one person's getting hit pretty bad. Like other than that, it's like all these like AOE spells all the time because the AOE stuff, area of effect, I believe is what that stands for. Yeah, yeah. All that stuff, um, where it's like something that like hits your whole team. That's what I'm more having to focus on now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh with these with the way the the Shadowbringers second half of Shadowbringer stuff especially uh was made. So just going in there and like resetting my hotbar stuff on the PS5 was just a nightmare. It was a nightmare. Yeah. I mean And then I had to look up in a video on someone else's hotbar setup which was <laughs> so much better than what i did <laughs> so i'm using someone else's like i'm using someone else's setup and it was it was great it was great yeah i had mine so in the beginning roxo was telling me that he thought my like hot bars weren't carried over from ps4 to 5 but it turns out i have the ps4 client downloaded on my ps5 so it's all the same i just forgot what the moves looked like i was like i don't i <laughs> I was like, ah, fire two. That seems kind of old for my AOE attack. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh, it's flare. Like, where's flare? Where's, oh, it's right there. It's on the fir first page. I just have like one page that I use pretty much. It's funny, like with the white mage, there are things that are still like on the list of spells in my character stuff. It's like you go into your character, man, there's 9,000 menus for 4D, but you go into like the, the character traits menu or whatever. It still says that I have arrow and I have all these things. If I put them on my hotbar, though, it turns into a different spell. Oh, yeah. And it's like, yeah, that one doesn't exist. I really have two, like, regular attacks. Yeah. They and they dumbed it down there. They they stripped it down hard. They like, did, which I, I, in some ways, I still have a lot of, like, I have a lot of spells. I wish I had rays. I used to have rays. Oh, yeah. I that don't would have be rays nice. anymore. Hey, hey, Square Enix, can we, even though, even if it might be, like, a really hectic spell to get, and it has, like, some, like, god-awful cooldown, if some, maybe a tank, or maybe a, maybe a black mage or someone had some sort of ability to raise someone that would be nice yeah that would I, be nice like just for that crux battle where the white mage gets hit by some aoe that's some bullshit aoe and and you're three quarters of the way through a boss's health and it's a really hard fight you know make it really hard to do but just just one hail mary raise would be nice for for another class yeah please there might be phoenix downs i never uh i know i bet the roxo saying red mage that you, I could probably red mage, I guess, and that would give me a raise. I guess I like that damage though. Yeah, um, tanks that raise, yeah, tanks heal. You fucking healing yourself half the time. Shit, man. When we all die, we're watching the tank just heal up and fucking. He's just self sufficient as yeah. shit. Um, it's funny that the meta used to be that I just had to be like up the tank's ass with cures all day, and now there's still a bit of that, but it's not nearly like. The tanks we've been playing with, especially Krenital, who's a really good tank. Um, don't don't tell Krenital I said that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I do have to pay attention to them if things look bad. You know, I can use my big, huge cure that does, like, a lot and protects them or whatever. Um, uh, 
but I don't have to be like constantly pressing cure one, cure one, cure one, cure one, cure two, like on the one guy over and over again, which yeah. was like honestly like Realm Reborn to like Stormblood was kind of like just one single target cure. It yeah. was, oh yeah, it was constantly that with like occasionally uh, an AOA cure, but now it's like totally the opposite. Yeah, because we're kind of more fun. We're getting nailed by the map fucking constantly. Yeah, these new ones. There's so much shit going Everyone's on. Everyone's like, getting hit. They're like, okay, well, we made the map really hectic. Let's make shit off of the map. Now nail you into the <laughs> wall and just destroy you. Yeah. Uh, that this expansion's gotten a lot of that. There's like, you got to watch everything, and it's it's hard when I've got like a rotation that I've got going. And there's on. kids running around. There. Yeah, there's children. <laughs> I've got like people crawling all over me, and then I look up and I'm getting fucking nuked by some ability, and Joe's like, "Oh, idiot!" No, here's it. <laughs> I have kind of my my issue with the game still, and I I think I've had this like issue with the game overall. The, overall, the game is really fun when it's a game. Again, when it's a game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh my my biggest problem with the game is like i could use a little bit more simplicity in the map stuff like i kind of miss the aoe's of old of yesteryear a little bit um because now they're ridiculous but not only that there's like so many things as a white mage i have to pay attention to yeah there's so many there's so much shit on the screen that I often don't see the AOEs happening because I'm just like, my eye is on the top left corner looking at someone's bars. cure yeah. and I'm not seeing the other parts of the, of the map. And I've, yeah, I've messed with the sizes of things. I've done a whole bunch of stuff to like clear the screen as much as I can, but it's still too much stuff. Like it really is as simple as I can have it. And it's still just like a little bit too much shit on the yeah. screen. Um, it's not a huge deal. But that is often why I we've wiped is because I was worrying about healing someone. My I was in the top left corner, and then like instead of having a regular AOE which you know shines or something, so that yo oh like my eye like is pulled to it so I could see it. Um, it'll be like in the little talk menu on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. It'll be like you know, blah, blah, blah is warming up or, and they're like, Oh, his eyes turn blue or like some shit like yeah, that. Like, I'm not looking at that. I'm not reading that. I would have to be reading the bottom and like, I'm getting caught. Like Dr. Roxo is of course paying attention to that because of like what he's doing. And so like, there's a whole bunch of shit and, like, well, no, you have to target the guy and lock on him. And then you can see it on this top of the part of the screen. It's like, how about you guys clean up the fucking game screen instead? Yeah. Uh, Roxo says you can filter out other people's abilities. Um, I don't know. It's and just... for him, he says that everyone else looks like they're auto attacking. My joke was like, you should be able to dumb down the combat so hard that it's like FF1. You know, you've got like, it's just your little guy and like our little guys attacking the boss. This is your screen, right? This is what the game should look like yeah. to you. You strip it all the way down and then you're just kind of curing us along the way. You're like, all right, big cure for everybody. We're all dying. Okay, this guy's dying a bunch. And then you just see, like, us making little, like, shitty 8 bit animation attacks at the boss. I was like, well, look, if you're going to do Turn these, if you're going to do these AoEs where you have to read things, or there's like, like a rocket in, like, the ass, <laughs> the asshole of something, like, way far out of the screen, like, oh, make sure you have your camera turned to the right uh, uh, throughout the whole fight. Cause with that thing, you know, if that thing jiggles a little bit, you're about to get like fucked if you're in the middle or whatever. Like there's yeah. there's like random shit that's like so like minute that you have to pay attention to oftentimes in these battles. It is really like It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot. It's like over the top. I could I could use the old Realm Reborn um Heaven's Word AoEs where it's just like Maybe it's fast, maybe it's complex shapes or whatever, but at least it like shines, you know, at least it like tells you it gives you like a moment to like react to it instead of being like, you just kind of already have to know what the boss is going to do and what you have to pay attention to instead of like your ability to just like react to it. Yeah. So I don't know. There's, it's still fun, but I think some of the boss fights have been unfair. Yeah. And yeah, I th especially in shadow bringers, like there's yeah. one guy where it's like his eyes are shining blue and that means get close to him. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to pay attention to this fucker's eyes? Yeah. And also, how am I supposed <laughs> yeah. to know that the first 12 times I play that boss without yeah. being told by someone else yeah. that that's what I have to pay attention to? Really, the only dungeon we kind of mostly figured out by ourselves was the last one. 
The last two Kermitol were kind of easy. Couple, yeah. He was giving us a couple hints, but most of it we were like, yeah. okay, what's going on? Like, what the fuck just happened to me? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. It's AOE, and then it's fucking AOE, 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 run. Just don't fucking stop running. Yeah. And, you know, we figured it out, but I, I, don't know, I think part of it is, like, these guys who play it normally, they... I think they just figure it out. I, I also know. think it's it going to be or, those menus and everything are just a lot easier on the PC. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everything's easier because there's more space. And yeah. It's just, mo- yeah, it's more space. You Your eyes keyboard. are closer to the screen as well. Everything, everything like that. Yeah. I think it's just better. It's it's going to be a better experience on the PC than it would be on the PlayStation. Um, and so that might be a PC versus PlayStation thing. They're obviously designing this for the PC players. So yeah, and they did. They've done. I think they've done a really good job of you know making it playable on the PlayStation. I just think that yeah. it's it's definitely not quite up to snuff. Mm-hmm. I guess, or maybe we aren't. I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's definitely made for PC. Um. So yeah, I I enjoy it when it's a game. I do think the cutscenes are way too much. Um, and not all the cutscenes, but. The cutscenes in between the cutscenes. How about that? The in between the actual story beats that are good. You get these sloggy ones, and frankly, it makes you not want to pay attention to the better ones because you're kind of checked out. At least I am. Yeah. Uh, even for a Final Fantasy game, it's just a little too heavy on the cutscene side. It's almost like the beginning of FF13, only actually worse. It's even more cutscenes for versus gameplay. Um, it's just a little too much. So th- that's kind of all my thoughts on this thing. I don't know if you have anything else. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's all right. Like, like you said, it's, it is fun to play when it is being played. Um, that's why I kind of, I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying to get the platinum on the PS4, right? And I'm doing a lot of the side stuff, like fishing and like, doing all that and that to me it's it's kind of boring but it's also a little bit more interesting because it's like oh i have to catch this bait to then go catch this creature and it's like there's a little bit of yeah it's fun to play it even when it's not that fun what i'm doing in the game and so like there's there's a lot of stuff that we haven't done in the game that i think we need to start incorporating into the game but at the same time most of that stuff like we said earlier is older so it's like i does it, does it really count? I don't know. I, I'm not sure how to feel about the pacing of the gameplay because we're so far behind on some of the side content that, mm. I don't know, maybe with this new expansion, well, not new, but with uh, with Endwalker, maybe we try to do all of the stuff that's in Endwalker while we're playing it. And then maybe that might make it feel more like it's a little more balanced. Yeah, maybe. I mean, we might be like trying some ridiculous hard fight trial over and over and over again. And that would add to the gameplay time. I guess you're right. Yeah. Um, so that, that is something to consider. We should definitely talk about that. Um, I, uh, oh gosh, there was something else I wanted to say. Yeah. Fabesy in the chat says, y'all want some exposition with your exposition? <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> A little more. Yeah. Uh, exposition with your exposition it's almost like the middle of the wheel of time right now it's just like nine thousand characters really slow pacing yeah we all know that the the beginning and the end of wheel of time is what's good it's not the it's not the middle i mean that's kind of how these expansions are <laughs> and going that's how, yeah that's how these patches are it'll be like the beginning and the end of the patch they'll have like the big dramatic scene that's better paced with better camera movement and all this and better writing. And it's all, all there. But in the in-between shit, it's like 9,000 characters, half of which you don't remember. And it's just, woo. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. It's a little much. Yeah. Um, but overall, like, no, actually over, uh, yeah. Overall, I actually think it's starting to be a net negative just because of the gameplay issue the thing the thing is guys if we if we decide to do more gameplay it'll just be a lot longer before another episode comes out because then we're just gonna be in 14 playing it so the 20 hours of cutscene plus five hours of gameplay will become 20 hours 20 hours and that's 40 that's gonna be like at least 40 days before another episode comes out just think about that I, i'm sparing about an hour a day i've been doing that since 2014 and not changing. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think we definitely need to start catching up on some of the raids and trials and stuff that we're behind on. Yeah. Um, and that's stuff I want to do anyway. I want to experience it all. So uh, I think we'll start making our nights that we get together more of an event, I think, when we get together for the dungeon that we're on. I think we need to have, okay, get this and this and this unlocked, and we'll do these. Oh, the thing I actually wanted to say, I remember it now. Um, Final Fantasy XIV, I don't know where it is in terms of like its overall, like how many people are still playing the game versus how many people were playing it three years ago. Um, my guess is that there are a lot less people playing it now, um, and that's mostly based upon the fact that they even added trust to the game in the first place. Um, now there are, you can play with the other characters in the story. Like they become trusts when you open up a dungeon yeah. and you can single player the dungeons. Now I've never actually tried it cause I don't want to. Yeah. Um, but it's, you know, it's something they eventually did for 11. There's not that many people playing 11 now. Um, and it's something that they now have for FF 14. And, uh, that, that's a little concerning and it makes me wonder, okay, so they're doing all this cutscene stuff for the super fans that are still there that are going that far into the game. Um, you know, you have to play all that content to kind of get everything opened up for you. And so I, uh, I can kind of see it like Square Enix kind of like going the more narrative route, less multiplayer stuff is pro it might like, I don't know. This is the, this is an actual chicken or the egg argument here is like what came first like less people playing the game and getting excited about the actual game part of it and then they increased the length of the cutscenes, or was it they started getting more and more uh you know long-winded with their story content uh with less dungeons and things to do for multiplayer experience and then that makes you know people drop away or at least Square is anticipating that that's going to be the case. So, which would be, I mean, it's aging, so that would yeah. make sense. Um, well, I know that when it came out, this it was so packed that you couldn't actually buy the expansion. They took it off the market really? because there were so many people playing it. This Endwalker. Yeah. Wow. So it was so big that they stopped making money on it because they, they couldn't justify taking your money because they knew you weren't going to get to fucking play the game. Um. Well, then why the hell do the trusts? I, I I read something somewhere earlier that mentioned the trusts, but I was like, oh, it's been there for a while. I don't, I'm not going to bring it up. And now I wish I would have fucking written it down. Ah, uh, okay. It had something to do with uh, getting... Let's see. We're reading a thing here. Uh, I can't remember. There was something about why they did it and i think it was to like help players who are starting out get caught up faster because there's less people playing the old content well people are doing their daily so it's like a dungeon roulette yeah, yeah like wouldn't people you would still snag be able those. to code in some sort of like we got 15 new players get them in, in this now. world today you yeah. know if they if they roll into a dungeon make that the daily you think there'd be some yeah. way to do that because like i mean there could be you can kind of like check mark which dungeons you want in your dailies so maybe there's just like Maybe there's a larger chunk of players than I would assume, like not like deselecting old content. So that's a possibility with their. With yeah. Their and Roxo brings up a good point in there. The servers are always full. Um, and yeah, they're, it, they usually have to wait to log in. Yeah. Unless it's like last seconds. night at three in the morning, I didn't. <laughs> when I got on and cracked some beers and started fishing. <laughs> um,. I don't need a license for this fish. Exactly. I only have to pay $13 a month. <laughs> yeah. Which is way more than a fishing Instead license. Instead of $26 <laughs> once yeah. a year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I guess the cues is part of the reason why they did that. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I guess I'm wrong with that, but uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they're doing it. Like, it's, just, it's getting less and less of a multiplayer game. Like... All it used to be like those single player things that are basically dungeons, but it's a single player thing in the campaign, which we had a couple in this. That used to be like few and far between, and now it's like every other patch there's one of those. Like 
yeah, it's gameplay and yeah, it's fun. But gosh, I would rather be playing with my friends. Yeah, it kind of sucks that even we if can't... it was the same fights, I'd rather play with my friends. Make them harder and be able to have two players. Like, yeah, just let me come in there and yeah. we both. Because a lot of times in these fights, like the one at the end of the um, this chunk of content, there was each one of those areas we had at least three people fighting. So like I could have been your Stola, you could have been. I would you know, love like Crystal Boy. Exactly. I would love a two player type of event because we yeah. have a four player one, we have an eight player one. I believe like the raids of some ridiculous amount. Like, of people, it's like sixteen right? and shit. Yeah, give us a two player one. Like, yeah, and make that that can be the little ones that are that they're doing there. Little story ones. Yeah, the little yeah. story ones where it's like you're fighting one guy and some crazy AOEs, and let's say you bring that second person in, it could be like Diablo or something where it's just increases the difficulty when you have multiplayer in there. But you can make. I feel like they can do that and. I don't know why they do. Don't. Yeah. But, you know, I just long for the days where multiplayer games were games. I know. I know. <laughs> I think I'm still on the team of, uh, I think, FF11 in its complete package. I still think it's kind of more... I, I think it's kind of better than 14 in its complete package, as far as being uh, an MMO. Okay, yeah. I think when we did our official rankings... Gosh, did we include the expansions nope, in that? Nope, we didn't. Okay, we never so we, have. Yeah, main story game, if you're just doing a Realm Reborn before the patches of Realm Reborn, like to the end of Realm Reborn versus FF11 to the first time that you kill the Shadow Lord. Yeah, FF14 is a better game yeah. for sure. Yeah. But all expansions included overall multiplayer experience overall story experience uh, by the way yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> ff11 even though the quality the quality of life is way better than 14 yeah i even think that the actual like when you're in a like doing dungeons in 14 is funner than anything in 11 um but overall, Eleven is a game for almost all of it. Yeah, and that's the difference. Unless you're playing Treasures of Otter Gun, then that is cutscene after cutscene after. And cutscene. yeah, that's the only one though. Yeah, that's that the is only the only one expansion that like that's this. like that. And it was fast. We did that in a week. We did. We Japanese midnighted the hell out of that thing. We did like put a lot of hours into it though. Yeah, this the we yeah. are peaceful mailing it a lot more than we used to. We used to chunk shit. Yeah, like hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we did three of those in a week, I think. We were just like fucking... Bam, I will say, by the way, bam, we started bam. the Shadowbringers shit. We did do a 14-hour 14. To start off? Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a lot of time. Yeah, and we did like, I think every two hours, we would do a optional dungeon. We were opening up stuff. That was our like pattern for the 14 hours of 14. Yeah. Um. Not a bad idea to do again. No. Except I, it is a horrible idea to do again. It is also time. a bad idea, yeah. <laughs> it's not a bad idea, but it's also a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, 11 is, it's a game the whole time. The thing is, like, with 14, I think I talked about this last time, um, with 14, you're going from area to area, and you're just teleporting everywhere. And even if you are walking through a place, like, the only creatures that are aggroed are ones that are like right next to your level. Yeah. And even then they are never a threat and you can always run away. And I would have never thought that I would have missed the days of being like fucking ass raped on my way to like Bastok or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe like I kind of missed the fact that FF 11 was a challenge the entire way through. Yeah, yeah. And it was just because, like, the thing that I miss about it was that it was, you're doing something. It's a yeah, game. Yeah, You're meeting up. You have to yeah. work together because, sure, those enemies aren't that strong, but when you get, like, 15 of them, yeah. they start hitting. They, they hit hard. Even even in our, like, and we played, by the way, the easiest version of Eleven there is. Like, Seekers of a Duel in patch came out, or not patch, but expansion came out, and they they, like, nerfed the game yeah and that's the version we played and it was still really difficult um but yeah and it made it for like a made of multiplayer experience out of it i feel like there's somewhere in the middle that these two worlds can meet and we can actually have like 
a a decent story, well told, with a lot less cutscene, a little bit more brevity, um, while having a huge expanse of world, while also being having lots of things to do throughout the whole thing. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's yeah. It's just somewhere in between some middle ground where it doesn't have to be like fuckery with 11. Yeah. Um, but not as, not as, yeah, and not, not nearly as brutal, but just like a, the fun factor of 14 needs to be a little bit more in it. But 14 only has that fun factor every once in a while. Yeah. So I miss the, uh, I kind of miss the, the, the heroine of each of the like things too. I was like thinking about that the other day and I was like, man, I kind of miss that. Like 11 had more self-contained stories. Yeah. Could, I think, and I think wings of the goddess was the best expansion of 11, but, um, they all had a heroine that was kind of the main character of that expansion. Yeah. And so I think the storytelling might've been just like, not in every expansion, but just like in general, just a little stronger. Yeah. And like, it's weird because I'm like, I, they were all very endearing. And by the end of them, I was like, I really like this one now. Like I was like, after the last one, I was like, oh, this chick's way better than the last one. And like each one of them, they had like enough development in them. And I was like, man, it's like, yeah, I kind of love this character. Like 14 takes the approach where you are the main character. Yeah. And that's, I don't, I don't, and there's a big group of people who you, have to remember and every time they add a character from an expansion they become a main character or yeah. they become one of the team you know yeah and it just makes the it just makes it bog down and 11 was just a little bit more stripped down in, yeah. in the in the storytelling so i kind of miss that man yeah i miss that too i'm missing it now for sure but it's like i we, i was excited i was like joe we're gonna play together and it's like every once in a while <laughs> yeah. I'll meet you here and then we'll play for an hour and then all right, meet you in ten hours of cutscenes. We'll play again. See you, buddy. Yeah. It's it's just vicious. I don't know. And maybe it is it's partly our fault, because you're right, when we did fourteen hours of fourteen, we okay, every two hours we have to do something else because it's a lot and we're gonna want to kill ourselves. So FF eleven did have patch content that someone just brought up in the chat called Voracious Voracious Resurgence. Yeah. Um not an official expansion. So we have no requirement to play it, but I bet if we went back and did that, we would be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. someone get us back fourteen! This shit's brutal." Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, if they complete that line of quests or whatever, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed because we did the Shantoto. And those were just little like quest lines. I'll have to Coupo de Tad. We'll have to look at it. If it's enough to make it worth it, I'd be interested. But it. Technically speaking, we don't have to because we only said expansions. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't know. Who knows? I don't know either. I uh, I kind of like having eleven just like in the past. Yeah. Because then we can talk. We can then, then rip we can, on. Yeah, we can rip on fourteen. <laughs> yeah, about how oh this game that came out twenty one years ago <laughs> better. <laughs> like you could just say uh, it's it better in certain ways and yeah no, i agree still better in certain ways and there's like 14 can right it's wrongs if n walker really is the end of the main story of 14 then we can actually have like it's a possibility if they fucking do it to have like a self-contained story for the next expansion and like maybe mix up the way that they're telling the story and maybe add some new gameplay elements or at least give us a little bit more of the actual gameplay part. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many hours of like employee time it takes to make those cutscenes versus making a dungeon. It definitely is more taxing to make one of those dungeons, I'm sure. Like a lot more programming, a lot more design has to go into it. But you know, maybe maybe cut your cutscene department to like three people and then fucking <laughs> like hammer into the gameplay uh, yeah. stuff but i don't know i don't know either and i it's just gotten more and more long-winded as as 14's gone along which is too bad but yeah i swear to god i'm gonna try for ann walker just like i did for Shadowbringers. Uh, i'm gonna try to pay attention and try to get roped into it uh and and give it a good chance before i uh before i cast judgment upon it I hope to change my mind. I hope to have a really good time in, in Walker. Um, 
but we'll see. That's what's next. Yeah. Walker. Do you want to pull up our uh, rankings for everything else? I don't. We would have to listen to the end of the last episode, huh? Yeah, you want to do that? Okay, let's do it. All right, we have listened to the end of the last episode to see what our previous rankings were. So long ago. So long ago. Uh, mine was Shadowbringer, Stormblood, Dragon Song War, Realm Reborn 2.55 content, Heaven's Word, uh, the original Realm Reborn, The Legend Returns, which is the stuff in between Stormblood and Shadowbringers, and then the 1.0 cutscenes, which we <laughs> had to suffer through. I remember that now. That was rough, yeah. Uh, what was yours? So right now, my ranking... Shadowbringers, Stormblood, Legend Returns, Dragon Song War, Realm Reborn 2.55, Heaven's Word, ARR, Legend Returns. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, I, I must have just listed that again. Sorry, 1.0 cutscenes. Okay. Um I enjoy this. I don't think this is as good as Shadowbringers or Stormblood or Dragon Song War. Or Realm Reborn 2.55. I'm going to put it below Heaven's Word, I think. I I remember the excitement of going into the new areas in Heaven's Word. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. Um, not that the story in Heaven's Word or Realm Reborn really were amazing. So Shadowbringer is 2.5, I guess it would be 5.55 content. <laughs> Both Shadowbringer's content, Jesus. Um that's going kind of on the lower side of the middle. So my new ranking for all of the 14 um, story content, Shadowbringer is still number one. Stormblood is a close number two. Dragon Song War is a close number three. Then Realm Reborn, 2.55 content. Then Heaven's Word. Then the post-Shadowbringers content. Then a Realm Reborn uh, original storyline. Then The Legend Returns. Then the 1.0 cutscenes. All right, so my list as of right now, before adding this stuff, Shadowbringers, Stormblood, Legend Returns. I already said this in there. You already said this. Yeah, I was like, I remember there was... I mean, it's helpful when we have to listen to this in a year and a half from now. That's but... true, that's true. <laughs> this part won't be very helpful, Oh, you, actually, you know what? We'll only be going back like a couple months if we're doing Endwalker next. Yeah, so. yeah. This part will make it suck, because we're like, come on, just get to the <laughs> yeah, list. Get to the list. So let's make it even longer for yeah. our future selves. Um, ah, this is kind of tough, because... I did really like The Legend Returns. I thought that was really cool. Um, I don't think this is as good as that. I think the stuff uh, like with the fucking Gaius was really cool in that where he's just hunting all of the uh, hunting the fucking Asians. Um, there was some really cool stuff in there. It's definitely not there. Dragon Song War was sweet. Um, I kind of see where you're coming from with Realm Reborn. That's, 2.55. The 2.55 stuff is like where, like, at the end of the game, the the queen is killed, even though later she is resurrected, and it's stupid. Um, I remember this because I just listened to our old episodes, and I was like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, and Legend Returns, by the way, is about, that's it's so ranked, it's ranked so low on my list. I think it was because that's where I started, like, getting annoyed with the cutscenes. Like, really annoyed. My brain off. <laughs> and so, as, as, like, a revenge fuck you, I put <laughs> <laughs> Legend Returns down at the bottom of, basically, the bottom. Um, the conceivable bottom. 1.0, we can't. Yeah, 1.0 is like. Is, we didn't even play it. We can't possibly put that anywhere but the bottom. Yeah, it's, it was miserable watching them. Too. Yeah, Good watching God. the four hours of cutscenes or whatever there was. That was that was rough. It was a yeah. rough day. Yeah, we fell asleep in the middle. and had to go back and. Yeah, that's not a good. I thing. fell asleep during it. I right? I was thinking when we pulled up the list of one point I was like, I fell asleep when we watched that. Yeah. So I, I we probably fell too. asleep in each other's arms. Probably <laughs> on tearing the couch, up, crying because it's huh? so painful. <laughs> uh. Yeah, and I mean Realm Reborn two point five five. There's a lot of a lot of characters that are still like main players who's part of that. Yeah, I re I remember in two point five five remembering all the characters' names. Yeah. Being so. familiar with everyone. So I was a little bit more dramatically like pulled in, you know? Yeah. Um so Personally. I'm, I'm gonna put that one above it. And I think I'm gonna put Heaven's Word above it too. I think you're right. I think it's better than a Realm Reborn 
and the 1.0 stuff. Like the story might be better than Heaven's Word, but like the whole expansion, like getting into the new areas with the snow and everything. And yeah, and the dragoons and all of yeah. that. That was cool. That was cool. Uh, so I'm going to put it even lower, lower than you have it. Our lists are a little bit different here. So um, I'm going to put it above A Realm Reborn and below Heaven's Word. All right, so while you're typing that, I can say your list. So Caleb's ranking is the number one Shadowbringers. This is pre and Walker for anybody who needs a reminder. <laughs> number one Shadowbringers, number two Stormblood, then Legend Returns, then Dragon Song War, then Realm Reborn 2.55, then Heaven's Word, then the post Shadowbringers content as third for last, uh, just above the original A Realm Reborn story, um, or I guess the game, and then. Uh, the 1.0 cutscenes. That's the yeah. very bottom. I think the lack of Emmett Selk, who is a really kind of iconic Arden type of bad guy. Um, I don't think Elidibus was quite there. Um, and I don't think this new guy is quite there yet, but we're only getting introduced to Fan him now. Daniel? Fan Danielson. <laughs> Dan Fan Danielson. Uh, Something tells me he's going to be like killed off right at the beginning or become like godly or something. It's one of the two. He's going to be very different than how he is at the very least. God, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he uh, kind of makes me laugh. So if we want that in a bad guy, we're going in a different direction. Yeah, definitely a different direction from every expansion I'm looking at right here. <laughs> um, I, I just think that the the fact that, I don't know, I, I feel like they're, they're at a loss for like a really good bad guy. And I mean, I guess they still have um, Xenos, who is a really good bad guy. And that's why Stormblood is so high, because he was, he was pretty bitching. He was evil. But now he's like, yeah, he's, he's back, but they already killed him. So like his, the steam of his, him being the climactic end is over. You know what I mean? Like he's not going to be the end bad guy, I'm pretty sure, in this one. It's going to be... Or, you know, as Dr. Rogers has said, N. Walker wraps up the whole story we've been having the whole time, so... Yeah, maybe there's a secret bit bigger baddie than all of them. <laughs> yeah, all behind the scenes. It'll be right at the ending quest. It'll be a switch. Yeah. It'll be a nice old school bad guy switch. Remember those? Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good place to end. Yeah. Um, thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, be sure to check out our other podcast, Nude Clan Video Game Podcast, um, the Godzilla Podcast. You guys just recorded an episode yesterday. We did. Um, so what was that on? What, what episode did you record? Uh, we did one on Tokyo SOS, Godzilla Tokyo SOS. Is that a movie? That is a movie. Oh, nice. Back to the movies. Are you done with that show? No. Oh. We also did one on the show. Oh, okay. We watched the last three episodes of season one of Godzilla, the series from 1978. So not Godzilla, the animated series that was on when we were kids. <laughs> The shittier one, <laughs> mm, nice. by far. Uh, it is something that makes me and Drew want to blow our brains out when we're watching. Um, and it is one of those things, by the way, even worse than the bad Final Fantasy games, my memory wipe after those things is immense. Like, it's just <laughs> like... It, like, I think we, ta- we talked about this on Nude Clan. It's like, I know... My memory is fine because I've been studying Spanish for three years and I'm doing great. And that makes me think of like, why the fuck can't I remember something right after I played it or watched it? It's like my brain has decided. It's like just it just knows it's like, you don't care about this, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't need to review this for a podcast, do you? You really need to review it. Yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's just gone. It's gone right after. Yeah. I ha- I was really trying to pay attention on this one. I think I I largely did a better job of paying attention on this uh, like this patch content, but still not perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, glad you did the story right up. Yeah. And Walker episode is my episode, so that'll be fun for me. Yeah, enjoy that. Yeah, 20 hours of cutscenes. Uh, so we got those two. We have For Future Kings More, A Song of Schweiss and Johnson. Um, got to be coming back for oh, the, yeah. the prequel show. For House of Dragon, House of, sorry. What is it called? Uh, it's called, um, hmm. <laughs> I almost said the book. The book is Fire and Blood. I think it is. Is it House of the Dragon? I think it is House of the Dragon, okay. yeah. 
I just I remember the book name because the book name is better. Um, but I guess this is a little more. I don't know if it's more name recognition. Dragon. There's a million things with dragons in it. But uh, yeah, we'll be coming back for that. Um, so yeah, get excited for that. Sweet. And then, uh, Puff Puff Hour Dragon Quest podcast and um, Nude Clan. Yeah, well, we I haven't already, even mentioned, have we? I said New Clan first. Oh, you said New Clan first. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, and then uh, you know the others. Yeah, there's others. There's stuff. <laughs> Other stuff out <laughs> you there. You took about. Uh, be prepared. Be ready for um, N Walker. If you have a review of N Walker, you want to send it to us. You can do that at fffanatics123 at gmail dot com, or you can join our Discord. And there's an area for reviews. Um, and, uh, you can join our discord that should, there should be a link to that in the description of this episode, um, where you can join the conversation and have a lot of fun, uh, out there talking about Final Fantasy or video games or Godzilla or whatever the hell you want to talk about. Yeah. Um, after, after we complete the Shadowbringers or, uh, and Walker content, we will then be moving on to the, um, standalone Stranger of Paradise. Stranger of Paradise. Final Fantasy. Another Origins. multiplayer game that seems like it might actually be multiplayer. It seems like with playing a game. Yeah, where we play together as multiple people <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Um and then we're gonna be diving into the long awaited, long winded as well, Kingdom Hearts series. Yep. All the Final Fantasy uh cameos in the Kingdom Hearts series. There's like twenty two characters in Final Fantasy or in Kingdom Hearts. I was looking it up the other day. So there was a part of me that was like, well, let me just check and see which ones have Final Fantasy characters, and then we're, maybe we can skip a couple games. We, I don't think we can skip any. Yeah. Yeah. So we have those 10, Chrono Trigger, Xenogears, Bravely Default, and then those game sequels. Yep. And that's all we got left. So stay tuned for the the rest. Yeah. Of should our, be should be only time. like four years. Yeah, you know. <laughs> some, there's a couple, you know. This 10-year project. Yeah, exactly. Ultimate Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. All right, guys. Until next time, enjoy the grind.